it's, uh, it's something that I need to, do, to take care. Uh, moving a, a company from a mainframe environment that itself is secure by, by nature, is, uh, uh, all of us know perfectly how Recaf is power as a, as a security tool, uh, is something challenge because uh, you need to completely change your mindset. From more than 13 years, you stay in an environment that is completely secure, without uh, any issue, without uh, any problem in attack or something like that. And now we are, you, we are moving on an environment that uh, have a lot of uh, issue questions that are not yet answered in uh, security space. So it's something that we really need to take care of from the beginning. The idea and why we stress, we push a lot on that topic uh, starting from the beginning is that if we now start uh, with security by design, probably we have the chance, the possibility to create something that is really secure for our customer. We manage uh, ca the data that are very sensible. So for us, uh, protecting that data, mm, it's uh, something that we can absolutely consider in our roadmap. That's all? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Simona and Matteo. Uh, next up, we have Marco Mastrioni, uh, a software architect at Engineering II. He has been working in engineering for over 10 years, and he is in his current role, uh, he is the technical manager of the engineering of the healthcare platform. Uh, today, he will explore how they leverage W3 products to de develop a leading solution for communicating with medical devices through medical device integration. Welcome to the stage, Marco. Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Mastroianni, and uh, I am a solution architect, as you can see on the slide, of Engineering Ingegneria Informatica. That is one of the leading companies in IT in Italy, and we have also uh, several uh, nations inside our company uh, factories. So let's start with the uh, slide. What is MDI? Um, MDI, alias Medical Device Integration, is a software, is a solution uh, designed by Engineering, Engineering Informatica and Health Department that is created to make software communication secure, efficient, robust and intelligent with device. So we have to resolve the problems between the application and the communi communication with the healthcare device that you know I think that are several and very different in terms of uh, diagnostics instruments between a vital sign instruments. So we have a lot in kind of devices in, in this kind of environment. So uh, in this problem, we have also to try to, to catch uh, a lot of information in terms of uh, uh, giving intelligent, uh, like prediction, like monitoring and alert. So uh, we have tried to um, make uh, some data uh, a little bit intelligent to give prediction algorithms and also many kind of information to uh, people that are designed to maintenance of a device and also especially to the doctor, uh, to giving to the patient the main benefits of the kind of architecture. But let's go on a second slide. When we have a project, this kind of solution, uh, we have focused our attention on several goals. But uh, um, I'm trying to explain to you the, the, the most important challenging goals that we have to try to, to, to reach in this kind of experience. So the first one is uh, uh, to abstract the application, to the application solution the complexity of communication with a special device. As you know, uh, every healthcare device has a specific protocol. I can see HL7, Hatton Pipe, or XML, Hosted Query, uh, File Sharing, the access a lot of specific protocol uh, used to communicate with healthcare device. So an application today should know a lot of this kind 
of protocol use it uh, to get uh, information about vital parameters, and infusional pumps, or many other information about uh, a patient clinical status. So the first one of uh, uh, this challenge goal is, okay, let's start to uh, study a specific abstraction layer, that is a logic layer, that is able to provide to the application a data about the uh, information, for example, an exam, or maybe the clinical state of patients. So uh, we have tried to uh, implement this kind of solution in a multiple way protocol channel like MQTT, JMS, HTTP. So we have provided, like we can see in the next slide about uh, the architecture, a multiple kind of protocol used to uh, send information to the environment of the application. Another one, like I said in the overview of the presentation, it's to uh, use the powerful WS2 stream processor and WS2 machine learning uh, to uh, analyze these thousands of events. Imagine in a big hospital how many events we have about the uh, clinical patient's status, mm, vital signs, diagnostic exam, blood pressure, a lot of information, and also about the status of device. Uh, the status of reagents, uh, if maintenance is needed. So we have a, a lot of events uh, triggered by all the device inside a big structure. So uh, we have said why we cannot uh, uh, intercept this kind of event and uh, try to use machine learning algorithm or anomaly detection to give the prediction or maybe early warning system to the doctor or maybe to the maintenance people. So uh, we have tried also to reach this kind of goal that it is very difficult, especially when we are managing a life of patients. So we have tried to study all the algorithms used in the university, maybe in test environments. So it was very difficult to find the right algorithms. Like we can see in the in this slide, dedicated to in intensive care unit projects. And the, the um, challenging goal, it was also, okay, how okay, can we show immediately without a, a big effort uh, the information about uh, these thousand events, uh, catching also the, the status of the uh, devices, all the uh, patients, uh, with um, simple instruments that allow us, the customer, to create the personalized dashboard. So we have tried to use the WS2 dashboard server to create a customized dashboard and simply show all the information that the customer needs. Maybe in an intensive care unit control room, we can have a dashboard that shows immediately all the blood result, all the HR, heart rate monitoring, also all the clinical information. But in the room where, the, uh, where there is the people that is uh, uh, dedicated to maintenance of instruments, we can show, for example, the technical status of the device, if maintenance is necessary or not. So we have created the several customized dashboards. So let's talk about the, the architecture. As you can see, uh, we can find the several components of WS2. Uh, so we can start from the WS2 entry server, IoT server, message broker, uh, the stream processors, also the uh, API manager, because the MDS solution is very complex, so we have mm, catch it, we have stolen uh, the, the best of all WS2 components. Let's start with the WS2 uh, IoT server. Imagine in a distributed environment, or maybe in uh, the whole Italy or the Europe, uh, we have uh, several uh, devices distributed in all, all engineering customer. But uh, especially in the healthcare uh, division, uh, we have uh, also the, the same devices. Philips, Intelliview, the Orto device, the devices are the same. So uh, one of the, our requirements were to stand, was to standardize the methodology to do the packaging, the delivery, and deployment model of the, uh, the, of the device driver. The device driver is this component that uh, has the main focus uh, to uh, catch the specific protocol to uh, speech, to, to talk, to communicate with the specific uh, uh, devices like uh, HL7 protocol, or uh, maybe um, hosted query, or uh, sharing file. And at the same moment, uh, marshalling and marshalling this protocol to the MDI abstract protocol, and communicate with the secure message broker this kind of, this kind of information with all the environment. So, 
um, we use the WS2 IoT, like we can see in the next slides, to uh, giving a standardized mode to create the device driver. So we can manage the technical status, we can see in integrated dashboard the status of this device, we can also standard um, an easy way to deploy and also to install the enrollment phases, like we said in WS2 documentation, this kind of uh, component software. Then, uh, moving on the right, we have the message broker. That is the main actor in terms of the, uh, the responsibility to uh, give the correct communication in a bidirectional way between the device and also the application environment. So uh, I have put it a lock because we use a secure MQTT protocol. So um, it's not possible if you don't know the, the, the credential to catch all the information because we are in a GDPR environment in Europe. So uh, we, we have planned, we have designed all our application with the parading of the security by design and security by default. So we have catched our attention also about the privacy because we have in the care, so it's very important to, to not deliver on the free the user data. So when the, when the message uh, is coming on the message broker, it, is a, uh, it will be split in two main parts. The first one goes on the MDI main application that you can imagine like uh, an electronic health record that persists the information in a uh, uh, fire uh, model that is a, uh, an evolution of HL7 model, but this is standard, and also to the other one that is the stream processor, that it's able to catch all these events and try to give to the, a particular event an, um, a signal and a, and a specific behavior, because it has uh, a lot of correlation previous events. It can uh, analyze what is the behavior of a particular event, and it also can call through the API manager, a specific application sending today to it a specific alarm, maybe an event or a simply a message. So the important thing that I want to say now that we have two several two um, parallel flow. The first one dedicated to the MDI application that we can say like an electronic health record that is used to application to retrieve the information about a specific patient, specific pathology, or uh, other information about clinical status. <coughs> The second one is the flow, is the edge dedicated to the um, AI uh, flow, so the, to the stream processor um, uh, algorithms. And then we can expose this, all the information through the API manager in the directional way. The application exposes the, the API through the API manager, and also MDI can call and uh, at the same way exposes its API through the API manager. All the stack, all the horizontal stack that we can see here, is protected by WS2 Identity Server that implements the, the OAuth2 protocol with the GWT uh, token to protect all the interaction between these components. Another component that is reported here is, is, is the terminology services that is used for compensation and also enrichment uh, message. And that is a specific clinical component that is used usually to um, retain, to, to catch information about encoding and decoding of particular uh, clinical exam or maybe uh, some uh, measurements. As you can see, on the um, right part of the application, we can find some uh, engineering application like the SEO, the electronic medical record, the notification engagement, but also the third-party application because this stack is fully open, so it can be used with also the application that can expose their um, them API directly to the API manager of WS2. What are the components you use it inside this architecture? WS2 IoT, WS2 Stream Processor, the Enterprise Integrator Message Broker, the Identity Server, and also the API Manager. The Identity Server, like I said before, it's main responsible for communication, to make the communication of the whole components of architecture secure using OAuth2 with the JWT token. And it also used 
obviously, with the API manager to uh, get and catch and renew the token used for the API management. So we use the concept of service provider. Uh, we can use the integrated federator maybe with, say, ML2 authentication. So it's a very important actor, stakeholder, the identity server, because uh, it is the responsibility to make the communication secure. The enterprise integrator is the main responsible for communication with the external model to the platform solution. So it's also used for, for example, orchestration of several microservices. It can uh, interface uh, some component, for example, the MDI microservices with the a clinical decision support, or maybe with other services. Uh, exposed message broker used for uh, uh, exchanging messages in a secure way. Uh, it can be also used for transformation flow. Maybe I can send a MQTT and uh, with the enterprise integrator, I can transform the message in an older protocol. Maybe I can put on a shared queue or something like this. And uh, also to provide the standard communication API, because as we know, uh, WS2 Enterprise Integrator exposes an HL7 component. Um, HL7 is one of the most important standard in the healthcare solution. I think the, 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 the only one most more important. WIoT, WS2 IoT, allows to develop to the device driver with installation package. Uh, we have a several specialists distributed in Mool Italy. So giving today a standard mechanism to develop and install the application is a quick way and a safe way to develop the components um, in, a, in a whole environment. So I think that it's a good thing to develop a driver using the WS2 IoT device uh, component paradigms. And uh, if the device support, for example, if we imagine that we can have a device installed, for example, on the ambulance, we can use also geolocalization. Maybe we can have the tablet installed on the ambulance. Uh, we can have immediately on the dashboard, on dashboard WS2 IoT, for example, the, the position of the device, if supported, naturally, if it has installed the GPS module. Uh, since uh, each device usually has uh, uh, several information about its technical status, uh, we have provided inside uh, our device driver the possibility to uh, activate a health module. It means that uh, each device driver sends uh, like an earth bit. In this heart bit, that's a lot of metadata containing the status of device, the battery, the reagents, uh, days uh, before the next maintenance. So in this way, we can feed a central monitoring system that is embedded inside the MDI. Like I said in the first slide, each driver is able to transform specific device protocol into encrypted generic uh, platform protocol. So this is one of the most uh, important goals of our architecture. And uh, also, um, with the stream processor um, uh, cooperation, we can also configure predictive maintenance. It means that uh, thanks to the uh, metadata about the maintenance uh, that it sends uh, with the heartbeat message of the device, we can also plan a predictive maintenance. Okay, guys, mm, for two days, uh, the reagent will expire. So uh, please send an order to, to, to buy the new reagent for the diagnostic uh, device. Or maybe we have to call the Philips to give the substitution of the IntelliView device. So we can do a lot of predictive maintenance uh, thanks to the heartbeat metadata message. Stream processor, like we, we usually know, is able to do a lot of uh, message analyzing in real time. Um, usually in our project, we split inside uh, our SEP flow, uh, CAP flow, uh, complex event processing into several sub uh, flow. In this way, we can, analyzing, uh, we can analyze uh, data by data in terms of maintenance, healthcare, uh, clinical, and also the information 
mentioned that in a, a very, very um, useful case, use case, often case, should be put in correlation. Because when you have to do a predictive uh, alarms about the uh, patient clinical data, uh, it's better to compare maybe a single event with uh, an uh, healthcare uh, electronic record to match all the information. Then we can do an alarm because it's not uh, very simple in uh, diagnostic and also in clinical and also in non healthcare uh, departments after uh, to give predictive alarm without correlation and history about the patients. And the last one of stream processor is that the machine learning acquires and refines its classified algorithms in order to predict any critical, any critical situation. It means that uh, um, the healthcare applications are able to refine and train continually the data set. So it means that the, the IoT is able to uh, put all the information to the MDI central organization, central environment. Um, healthcare application that could be ICU, electronic health record, third party application are able through the API manager to train um, day by day, hour by hour, hour, by hour uh, all the information and the algorithm on machine learning. It means that in uh, long periods we can have uh, um, the algorithm uh, with a loss percent of, edge, uh, of error. And then uh, we can use the API manager to, uh, um, to train the machine learning algorithm. So the application are the uh, teacher of this kind of algorithm, but the application are controlled by the doctor. Only the doctor usually know if the uh, prediction is true or not. What are the benefits for the patients? Through this type of architecture, the patient obtains different benefits both in hospital and in the follow-up phases carried out in other places. Imagine now we, we can have a lot of wearable device from iWatch, uh, maybe blood pressure device, uh, um, uh, glucometer, a lot of device driver that could be uh, installed also in uh, our home because now with the IoT and the uh, internet connection at home, we, we can follow up the patients uh, also in the him, her house. So the, the benefit of this architecture are distributed in an heterogeneous environment. In the hospital context, uh, as we know, everything revolves around the communication and management of the instrument, from the management of the state of the device to the programming and the reception of clinical data of the patients. So the hospital can gain benefits in terms of maintenance, mm, less costs, uh, less problems, mm, planned maintenance of the device, and especially with the patient management, because we can avoid the errors during the communication. All the data are stored inside electronic health record, so we can avoid the data loss or maybe um, error about the communication of a clinical status. So I think that it's very important this part about the uh, clinical data of the patient. But uh, um, since the start of the presentation, we have talked in a theory way. So we have talked about the architecture, we have talked about the components, what are the, the benefits. But uh, let me to explain to you uh, what, are the, what is a real sample about the complex event processing inside the intensive care unit. That is a solution that we are testing now in Italy and the solution developed by fully by engineering, engineering, informatica. It is a case study. The intensive care unit, as uh, you can imagine a lot, uh, is a, um, has a special requirements. Patients monitor H24 by day, uh, heterogeneous and isolated device, because an intensive care unit has several beds, uh, one control room, but the devices are typically uh, located in a different um, location. Uh, all the vital information should be integrated with data from another solution. So if uh, we are monitoring the heartbeat, the saturation of oxygen, and many other information, surely we need to integrate with the electronic health record to give to the doctor the possibility to intercept uh, a clinical status uh, degradation or something like this. Uh, it's very important the communication speeds. All the information uh, should be uh, received quickly because uh, mm, the clinical status of the patient in ICU is very critical. And we need a timeliness of decision making. We need to uh, catch all the decision in a uh, few minutes, not more, because we are fighting with the death and life. 
So uh, critical care patients are often technology dependent on monitoring or life sustaining device because uh, we are in a special department. And the assessment of prognosis and patient certification making uses of this combined data source is extremely important. So it's very important to give the, uh, the prognosis and also the assessment of the, the patients, which highlights the importance of medical device connectivity. So we need to catch all the information as we can from the medical device to give Give you all the whole information to the doctor or the doctor in the control room. Uh, this is a, a special uh, environment that is called patient centric. And uh, I think that we are very near to the clinical disease support framework in this kind of environment. So, uh, this data made available by this device often take the form of signal that is fully compliant of machine learning models. And the, one of the most important ICU problems, like I said in the start of the presentation, is the right choice of the design of algorithms. So it's very important. It is a process. It is a project that should be uh, done and, do, uh, and uh, has a duration of several months when we try to find the best algorithms, the best classification of the machine learning, uh, machine learning algorithms. So it's not easy, OK, I can choose it, and it works. No, it is a project into project. We need to, to test, to choice, and retest again what is the best machine learning algorithm to uh, give the opportunity to the doctor to receive from the application a prediction even model. A real sample. MDI solution is able to notify immediately hemodynamic instability or shock, analyzing in real time the observation. Observation is a, a, an HL7 fire model to say, for example, an exam result, an earth beat value. So we call from now observation. That coming from ICU monitoring device. For example, the Philips IntelliView device, that uh, a very used device that catch all the information from the infusional pumps, uh, uh, blood pressure, all the information about the uh, monitored patients. And the alert can be based on complex event processing rule on the classified or the classified machine learning algorithms. Let's start with the, the sample. The scenario is that uh, we have several patients uh, under monitoring in IC room. So we are into the hospital. We have a, a specific divide connected to a specific patient with the P.1.1234 code that sends continuously observation. The trends of this ob observation become dramatically critically. So we need to help the doctor saying to him, warning, this patient uh, has something that is wrong, that will be wrong. MDI can intercept the trends and notify to the specific application the alarm. So we can uh, help the doctor between, uh, before uh, uh, a dramatically critically, critically situation will happen. How? Imagine that we have this table. So we have a lot of events triggered by the device. So we can find that the patient with the 1234 uh, uh, identification has a saturation uh, of oxygen, a systolic and the BPM that uh, jumping to 96 to 80. Uh, the systolic uh, jumps to 130 to 75, and also the BPM, the bit per minute, uh, jump to uh, 18 to 110. So uh, this situation means that something uh, wrong will happen. So a doctor should be uh, immediately um, go on the patient bed and uh, giving to him some drug. This is a simple chart that uh, um, show the, the trends. So in this way, thanks to the WSO2 stream processor um, that is able to uh, also to analyze a sliding window about a trend, we can immediately notify what is happening about the patient. I don't know if there is an animation. OK, yes. The message starts from the Philips IntelliView, then reach the message broker, then reach the, the router, that uh, at this point, it's routed to the WS2 stream processor uh, environment. Here, the complex uh, event processing analyzes the trends of the observation, and then at the moment, it's able to send a notification to the WS2 API manager that exposes the API of the application. That could be 
a simply desktop application, a notification gateway that sends immediately a WhatsApp message or maybe a push message. But the important thing is that uh, through this, uh, thanks to this architecture, we have avoided a dramatically a critically situation to the patients. I hope that I've explained it a little bit well. So I'm here for questions.